Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Pentiment. This is episode 12. Last time, we got more time to discover the murderer. Uh, people are not happy. Peter and the peasants are not happy. The Abbey is in disarray. Uh, the brothers are still all locked in the library. We went to visit them, and we have some things that we need to do. On, a, on the topic of our dear brothers, uh, Adoc's health has declined rapidly, so we're going to pop over to Sister Gertrude to get some assistance with some herbs. Brother Guy has been doing some terrible things with the with the ledger of the Abbey. He has been stealing money, which is why the Abbey has been on hard times, which is why the uh, Father Gernot has been taxing everybody even more. Brother Guy is a scumbag, and he always has been. Uh, we're investigating Otto's murder, and it seems that, circumstantially, Brother Guy has the sort of, almost the most, sort of, stake um, in his murder, you know? While it may not be so, it seems that he may have a, you know, a big old reason to, to murder Otto. But there is also the thread puller who has been giving letters to everybody, and I, we will be checking with Martin to see if we can get the letter that Anna confessed that she stole uh, from their house. That matches the description. Let's have a chat to some new people, because we have not met Sophie before. God bless you, Master Mailer. Oh, we have, we have, we have, we have met Sophie before. God bless you, Sister Sophie. It's good to see you again. Didn't even recognize you. And you, Master Mela? My. Just straight up did not have any idea who you were. I'm terrible with faces. I apologize. The garden looks spectacular. You've taken good care of it. I know it's been some time, Master Mela, but I must remind you of my vows. Fuck off. Do not talk to me. I cannot speak with men. Ah, that's right. Forgive me, sister. God bless you, Master Mela. Do not speak with me. Speak with the blind one instead. God bless you, Master Mele. Hello, Sister Margaret. Sister Gertrude said one of the townsfolk was killed. What happened? Otto Zimmerman, the town carpenter, was crushed by part of the construction at the Rat House. Oh, no. Oh, no. I heard some of the sisters saying it was a murder, and the peasants chased the monks into the library. Sister Dana even said they're accusing Father Abbott. Is that true, Master Mela? I'm sure it was just an accident. Yes, but no one knows who killed Otto. I'm trying to find the truth. I pray you do, Master Mela. Everyone's getting scared. I heard Sister Sophie last night crying. Mother Illuminata says God will preserve us, but everything just keeps getting worse. Maybe the Lord is punishing the Abbey. Why would God want to punish Kiersau, sister? I don't think the abbot should treat the peasants so harshly, but I don't know what to think anymore. Has anything else happened in the convent recently? Well, a man ran into me when I was washing lettuce in the herb hut a few days ago. Oh, a man ran into you when he was washing lettuce in the herb hut a few days ago. What did he smell like? Tell me his smell. Is that so strange? Well, I mean, the herb hut is here, is it not? So why would a man be here? I mean, I'm here, but why would another man be here? Yes, even in a joint monastery, the sisters and brothers' quarters are separated. He should have been in the church since it was almost Vespers. Hmm... Who was it, sister? Can you describe him? Yeah, I know. You're fucking blind. Can you describe him? I can do my best, even though the hut was dark. I knew it was a man because his figure was taller than any of the sisters, and he grunted when he bumped me. Could it be one of our suspects, master? Hmm. Perhaps. Did you recognize his voice? No, he didn't say anything, but I felt the texture of one of the habits when he bumped into me. His skin was softer, too, and he was knocked back when we collided. Oh, okay. So a smaller a smaller man? A smaller, softer man? He grabbed me and moved me out of the way. No beard, either. 
No beard. Okay, small, soft, lack of beard. What would a brother be doing in the herbal hut? I don't know. He startled me, but was in and out of the hut before I could call out. Bang things around, too. I think it was one of the younger brothers. The rest aren't light on their feet. I can hear them shuffling all the way across the garden. I still lose a few suspects, Brother Lucas and Brother Guy. Brother Guy. Both fit that description, as does the abbot. But the abbot has his own house. What would he be doing sneaking around the herb hut? You're right, Father Gurnut would just order one of the brothers to get something for him anyway. Master Mela! How cheeky! Ha <laughs> ha! That leaves Lucas or Guy. If I may, Master Mela? Yes, Sister Margaret. Brother Lucas and I are friends. I don't think he'd hide from me. Oh, that just narrows it down to just one. <laughs> that leaves Brother Guy, the guy who is at our top of the suspect list anyway with the ledger. Guy is young and fast enough to be in and out in a flash. Sister Margaret, what was he doing here? I don't know, Master Mela. I couldn't tell what he was doing or if he took anything. By the time I realized what happened, Sister Sophie came and got me for supper. Did you tell any of the sisters? I told Sister Gertrude about it. She agreed it was very odd since whoever it was should have been at supper. I might be able to help you identify which herb jars he grabbed. We should get her blessing first, though. She's a stickler about her herbs. Would you help me find her? Of course, sister. Well, I need to find her anyway. There she be. Sister Gertrude, may I take Master Mela into the herb hut? We're looking for anything that man might have left behind. Ah, your mystery intruder. Why are you so interested, Andreas? We think Brother Guy was rooting around. He may have left something. We'd like to double check. Very well. I prefer you not just open every jar, however. Some of the herbs need to remain sealed. And how are we supposed to figure out if he left anything? I know the jars by sound. If you gently shake them, Master Mela, I should be able to tell you which ones he picked up as I came in. Interesting. I know he used three of the jars. Once we find all three, we can figure out which is the last one he opened. All right, that sounds reasonable. Enhanced hearing and enhanced smelling. This way, then. Cat. Mousefanger. Oh, cool. Dorth. Oh, yes, I need to take that jar up to the abbey. What is it? An ointment for the abbot made with Dorth. Oh, that one. It's for his scabies. I'm always making it. He uses a lot of it. I like that you can examine them all and get descriptions too. Oh, you should take some of this before you go into the cities, Andreas. It's fever few. It clears the phlegm of the head quite effectively. Ah, that stuff. It's gross. But Sister Gertrude makes everyone at Kearsau eat it. And you've been well because of it. Honestly, I think we could do with a bit more of it in our meals. Yeah. Woad. You'll like this one, Andreas. It's woad. Woad. Oh, that creates the most exquisite blue ink. I didn't realize you grew it here. We have a small supply. Not for ink, though. Brother Adok say, can't hold a quill as steadily as he once could. I make an ointment with woad that helps his palsy. Mandragora? Mandragora. Some choose to use the mandrake for evil arts, but these have all been cleansed. Only Sister Gertrude handles the mandrakes. And with good reason, too. I only use them for... pains that can't be rid of any other way. Brackworts. Oh, yes, that reminds me. I'll need to make some more tithomile salve soon. I'm not familiar with this herb. Ha! I'm not surprised. You're a healthy man, Andreas. Tithomile is used for gout and arthritis and memory problems. Father Thomas comes to get some for Sister Amelie every now and then. Athenia. Oh, Bethany. Surprised to see that herb among your jars, sister. You know its uses, Andreas. I know its medicinal uses, but I was always instructed to stay away from it. 
And with good reason. Betony can be used for terrible invocations and spells. Interesting. We've got a couple of evil herbs in here right now. The two red ones. I keep a jar because it can be a good remedy against such magic when used correctly. Don't spill that one. I just made a new batch of hydromine, so it's very full. Hydromel. We use it as a base for many remedies, so I'll always be making more. It's fun to drink, too. Much nicer than the wine we have at supper. What's in that one? Dill. Very good when the cows are ill, but a bit much for us unless cooked. Ah, mugwort. Brother Matthew has a soft stomach, so we make quite a bit of it into cakes for him. Sinker foil. Five-leafed. Yes, that's how the plant gets its name. I keep it as a paste with flour and oil to break fevers. Careful not to open the nettle, Andreas. Nettle? That stuff stings. Why keep a jar of it? I wouldn't be surprised if you've eaten it yourself, Caspar. The dried leaves lose their sting. Whenever the horses are unwell, we mix nettle with lovage, and they're right as rain the next day. That one's so small. That one holds poppy seeds. The seeds are potent when eaten to induce sleep, so we don't use them very often. I remember eating some before my eye surgery. I was woozy for a long time afterward. Ah, brooklime. Very useful against poisons. It purges the stomach so that the bad humours have no place to rest in the body. You have so much of that. No. We need a lot of calendula to tend to many people. Its juices can expel most bad humours. Pounding the juices makes my hands sticky. Stickiness can be washed away, Sister Margaret. <laughs> She's like, ah, I never knew that. Wound words. Wound wart. I remember the physician laying these leaves on my brother when he had smallpox. Yes, that one is, uh, that's one of the more common uses for wound wart. It drives the humours back into the body, no matter how they arrive on the skin. All right, we're on our final four. I like that there's a description for each one. It's real nice. Sister, why on earth do you have hemlock in the herb hut? It's a dangerous plant. When eaten, yes, but hemlock is very good for inflammation of limbs when applied on an injury. I helped Sister Sophie when she dropped a pot on her thumb. The swelling had gone down by next morning. Oh, no, I don't want to put, it, put that down. I'm examining before I pick them up and shake them. Ah, yes, lungwort. Very useful herb. Sister Lysbet once uh, came down with humours so terrible she could barely breathe. But when Sister Gertrude gave her wine with lungwort, her coughing got better. Praise God. I can smell that one from here. Oh, that's the licorice root. Sometimes it overpowers the other herbs nearby and I can't identify them by scent. Ah. What about this one? Hmm? Oh, psyllium. We don't use that one often, save for terrible fevers. Okay, time to shake some shit around. Uh, what would we sh- well, hmm, I'm gonna go for the- based on descriptions, I feel like we could probably even nail it down. No, it was something different. No, it was something different. Never mind then. No, it was something different. No, it was something different. No. No! 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 There was three of them. I haven't even found a single one yet. Yes, he definitely picked that one up. Okay, we got one. No! No! Yes! One more. No! 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 Yes, you definitely picked that one up. Please shake each jar in order, and I'll tell you if it makes the right sound. It's the three green ones. The three green ones. Okay. Maybe that's why he was shaking them, because he was like, I know it's in a green jar, you know? Yes, that was the first jar. Nice. That wasn't the second jar. Start again. Yes. Yes. All right, that was the second one. So dill, huh? Yes, that's it. That's the right jar. The dill. Wonderful. Seems like it's still sealed. 
Let's see what's inside. Brother guy, brother guy, brother guy. He be hiding money in the herbs. Ding, ding, ding. It all lines up a bit too well, doesn't it? That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. We found the money Sister Amelie was talking about. Guy really did steal from the Abbey. What? Andreas, what are you saying? Amelie overheard Brother Guy confess to Father Thomas that he stole from the Abbey. We've already proven it in the ledger, but that's fine. This is where he must have hidden it. Oh, that was Andreas speaking. Sorry. <clears throat> this is where he must have hidden it. No wonder he shoved me out of the way so harshly. Apparently Otto knew he had taken the, mod the money too. Oh dear, I should inform, inform Mother Illuminata about this. Yeah, Sister Gertrude, please wait. If he killed Otto, I don't want to put anyone else in danger for confronting him. All right, I'll give the purse to Mother Illuminata to hold on to. Thank you, Sister Gertrude. God bless you both. Ah, this is feeling pretty good to me. I found a jar in the herb hut at the convent containing golden rings and other jewels. Sister Margaret identified Brother Guy as the monk who hid them there. That's a big old ding ding ding. Mouse Fanger, thank you so much for hanging out with us while we identified the herbs. You can be patted. God bless you, Mouse Fanger. God bless you, Andreas. Mouse Fanger has finally spoken to me. God bless you, Master Mela. It's been a while. We have not spoken to Matilda since the event, and we left her name out of the whole situation, too. God bless you, Sister Matilda. I wanted to thank you, Master Mela. What for? Well, we know what for. I'm going to remain silent. You understood that despite what happened to me at the hands of the Baron, you did not condemn me. I appreciate that. The evidence pointed to Ferenc, not you. Yes, well, the event was still a tragedy. And Otto's death only more so now. I had always thought well of Prior Ferenc, but... Forgive me, Master Mailer, it's not my place. I ought to get back to work. God bless you. And you, sister. Nice. Ah, that's creepy. Greetings, Master Mailer. Yep, that was, that took me by surprise. I'm like, ah, there's a person there. <laughs> sister Dana jump scare. The fuck? <laughs> Who this? Lidges bit. God bless you, Master Mailer. God bless you, sister. How are you faring? Mother Illuminata is grieved to hear about Otto's death, as am I. The Lord granted me the gift of knowledge and grief, so I will help the sisters how I can. A heavy burden to carry. Not so, Master Mailer. It was by my losses that I found this life. As Christ said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now I can guide the sisters in their grief. I pray your counsel soothes their spirits. As do I, Master Mela. Is working for Mother Illuminata very different than working for Mother Cecilia? My duties remain the same, regardless of who the prioress is. You are very devoted to the Prioress, sister. Surely you've noticed some changes. Mother Illuminata prefers a warmer room. I maintain the hearth in her room throughout the night. That's incredibly considerate, sister. May it bring glory to God. I must return to my duties. God bless you, Master Mela. And you, sister. Andreas, good. I was hoping you would come by. Hello, Mother Illuminata. Did you need me for something? Yes, though I was hesitant to distract you from your investigation. And I do not often leave the confines of Kearsau, even in the best of times. Which these are decidedly not. You're being cryptic. I'll help in any way I can. God bless you. As our brothers are trapped in the library, it is unlikely they have received any nourishment. You need me to bring them food? 
The peasants are unruly. I need you to guide the sisters past them through the crypt and up to the brothers. Ah, yes, the secret entrance to the library. I see you remember it well enough. Good thing the peasants haven't found it. The sisters will say it needs to be tended to after all the mayhem that transpired there. Escort them and the food to the brothers in the library and return when you are finished. I may be able to do this for you, but not now. I understand that time is limited, but the brothers could use your help. If you can spare an hour or two at your next meal, the sisters will be ready. Just let me know. Of course, Mother Illuminata. What time are we at? God bless you. At your next meal. We are actually literally in meal hours. That's probably a good idea. I'm going to quickly chat to Gertrude, though, because obviously we need to take herbs back to Brother Adoc because of his condition. God bless you, Andreas. Sister Gertrude, I have need of herbs for chest pain. Brother Adoc is very ill. Yellow gen um, gentian, perhaps, or fraxinella. Do you have any? Oh my, Master Mela. Unfortunately, we have none in the herb hut right now, which is true because we actually checked the whole thing. There is yellow genetian higher up the mountain, but I recall there being some in the forest as well. If you can bring me some, I know of a broth that should be of help. Thank you, Sister Gertrude. I will set out with haste. May God shine mercy upon Brother Adoc. Take care, Andreas. Okay, we go into the forest. Okay, to the forest we go, and then we will come back here, get the broth, go to Illuminata, and have dinner time. And then we'll probably look into the heading to Martin's house about the letter, maybe, but it's definitely not super important right now, considering everything else. Something I really, really, really like about this game is um, the, the fact that you do have that time window. There's a little bit of stress with like, oh, I want to make sure I can do as much as possible in the time uh, given to me. But I genuinely do really like that it, it means you have to really choose where you want to spend your time, you know? And I, I like that it has that, that effect, you know? Is it this one? It is. A yellow gentian, exactly as needed. Hopefully Gertrude can use this. Bring the gentian to Gertrude. But yeah, like who you want to have dinner with, who you want to talk to, who you want to investigate, where you want to go with your time. Like, I really like that it's a game where it's like, you're not able to do absolutely everything because it's unrealistic. Time moves for everybody. So I really like the way that it's handled. There is a part of me again that the only way I, I want to be able to like combat that from like a outside perspective is because of that. There's a lot of replayability with different choices you can make and different outcomes that I, this is the only reason why I wish that there was manual saving, you know? So I could be like, cool, this is a critical point or a critical moment, or I really don't want to replay this stuff at this point, and I want to see how things play out later, that kind of thing. It would be great to have a manual save. God bless you, Andreas. Have you found the yellow gentian? Yes, I have it. By the grace of our lord, fortunately, these are a fair bit dry already. Yes, best to grind and mix the gentian into a broth with a few other herbs for calming the body. It will take a bit of time. Come back later, Andreas. Until then. Okay, come back later. Pass the time. Requires some time to grind the herbs together and make the medicine. Return to my other tasks and check back with her later. Uh, in that case... In that case... Let's do dinner time, because she said... She literally said to do it at our next meal time, and we're right there, so... Let's do it. Do you have time to take some food to the brothers now? Yes, I believe so. Good. Sister Gertrude and Sister Matilda will go with you now. My god, this place is so messy. What have they done? I don't know about this. Hey, no one's supposed to be in the church. What are you doing in here? Take it easy, Carl. The sisters are just trying to do their jobs. What are you talking about? We need to clean the crypt and say prayers for the abbots and abbesses buried there. Assuming you haven't looted all their tombs as well. Hey, that's not, uh, I mean, Peter told me not to let anyone in the church. Do 
First storming the monastery and now stopping the sisters from doing their ordained duty. Are you trying to put your soul at risk, Carl? That's not fair, Andreas. You know the abbot is putting us all at risk by keeping the holy relic from us. Oh my lord. Something is happening with my persuasion options. The past three persuasion options that I've even had have all just been shit. There's not even anything that's happened to even help them, unfortunately. There's no plus or negative points in my persuasions. It's just all fails. All fails. The Lord instructs us to forgive and turn the other cheek. How can you desecrate the church? Even God overturned tables in the temple when the leaders against... Sorry, even Jesus overturned tables in the temple when the leaders against... When the leaders against against God, Master Mela. I'm sorry, Andreas, I can't. Oh shit. Oh dear. Sorry I wasn't able to be more help. The peasants are more determined than Mother Illuminata thought. The brothers would just have to hold on for now and let Mother Illuminata know. Good luck with your investigation, Andreas. Damn. Was there even a chance to pass that persuasion check or is it just like a fixed... Is that like a fixed failure? You know what I mean? Well... We passed the time. I'm getting the broth to take to Adok. Andreas, there you are. I have the curative for Brother Adok. I hope it is enough to alleviate his affliction. I did what I could with the time and tools available. He will appreciate the help, no matter what. Of course, of course. God bless you and all the brothers in these dire times. I hope this awful outbreak ends soon before any bloodshed. As do I. Thank you for your help. Be safe, Andreas. Give the medicine to Adark. I'm gonna save this man. Can't have another one of the older brothers die. I feel like what's really good about this time is I feel like I've made more progress than I did last time. As in like, with the time that we have to spare. I'm like, oh, I feel like I've, I've actually got a suspect I'm pretty confident in. With Ferenc, I was, like, suspicious more than anybody else, but I didn't feel definite, even with his, like, tool, you know? Because he was into his blood magic. <gasps> Brother Adok, I had Sister Gertrude make you something for your pain. Oh, you shouldn't have the others. As you care for others, I must care for you. Andreas, I never would have guessed back in the day you to be an angel upon Earth. Rest easy, Brother Adok. That man be snoozing. I administered the medicine to Brother Adok, and he seemed relieved. I hope that it will help him keep him comfortable until I can solve Otto's murder. Okay, lovely. Lord bless you, Andreas. In that case, we're at nons, we're at work time. We're going to go check in with Martin. We're going to go check in with Martin about the letter. Because... What else is there to do? We can confront Brother Guy about yet again another thing <laughs> with the coins, but we've found so many different pieces of evidence separately. Ah, uh, can we still get everybody drunk in the, uh, we could probably still get everybody drunk in the tavern. Could we go hunting with the miller as well? Yeah, we could go hunting with the miller. Okay. Let us see. Let us see. Martin Bauer. Martin Bauer house locked as always, but her Martin can be spoken to. Damn it. Hello, Andreas. Nothing about the letter then. Ah, cat. Good to see you, Andreas. Hello, cat. Martin seems different from how I remembered him. What changed? 
Oh, that's right. He was still gone by the time you left Tassing. We've had this conversation, have we not? He returned several weeks later, like he always did. Oh. Pretty sure we spoke to Cat already. So was it his travels or time that changed him? Only God knows the truth of a man's heart, but I suspect the challenges he faced on the road improved his memories of home. So he hasn't stolen anything or run off in years. Truly, the Lord provides for his faithful. He and Otto were arguing the other day, though. Do you know why? Were they? I'm sorry, Andreas, but I don't know anything about that. Martin supports Otto and his cause against the abbot's taxes. They didn't have any cause to fight. I don't know, Cat. Their argument was quite heated. Would Martin have any reason to hurt Otto? Of course not. They'd become close friends these past few years. Like brothers. Even brothers quarrel. After France died, God blessed me by returning my son to me, healed of his darkness. We should be giving thanks that the Lord led Martin to the light. Frown thoughtfully. You weren't blind to his flaws before. You know men like him don't change. I don't know, man. I feel like he might be. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. I'm just trying to find out who really killed Otto. Trust me, Andreas. I know my own son. Martin would never do such a thing. Thank you for talking with me, Cat. Thank you for hearing me out. Until later, Andreas. Until then. Hmm. Okay. Nothing about the note from that conversation, though. Hello, Andreas. Could you spare a moment, Brigitte? I suppose. What do you need? It was so strange seeing Martin. What do you mean? I'm pretty sure we had this conversation too. Seems like he came back from his travels a changed man. This will be remembered. For the better, yes. For all the grief he gave me, we're happy now. Is that so bad? No, no, of course not. You did get into an argument with Otto when I was coming into town, though. What happened there? Why have all the questions about my husband and Andreas? I'm going to lie this time. I think this might be my first time I've actually done the lie option. Just, I'm trying to catch up on everything that's changed in Tassing. You're a poor liar, Andreas. Oh, our first lie, and it was terrible. Remain silent. That will be remembered. Otto was pressing Martin to support him in the town commons. Martin's changed, and after his history in this town, he doesn't want to get involved with any more trouble. He didn't want to speak in the commons because he's afraid of the abbot. They squabbled over it, that's all. Otto threatened Martin if he didn't cooperate. What was your husband so afraid Otto knew? Okay, well, we actually got some ones there. So lied, bad, accused him of murder in Act 1, double bad. The husband can't have changed that much, which is, I don't wish that I would say that. That's unfortunate. I know that Otto and Martin had quarreled, but that's all. Maybe he flew off the handle with Otto. You know how men are. I'm sorry, but I don't know anything about the matter. Now, please, I need to get back to work. Of course, until later, Brigitte. Yeah, that did not, that did not go well. I was hoping to get information on the letter. Alas, we got none of that. Hello, Andreas. Hello, Andreas. Maybe we could speak to Anna. Oh, maybe we could actually just go speak to, maybe we could actually just go speak to Anna. Hey, Andreas, you really think those soldiers are going to attack the town? Very possible. Damn, I guess our taxes won't really matter if we're killed. You're not going to get killed. It'll be all right. I hope so, Andreas. Andreas, you and me need to talk. All right, what's on your mind? Why are you helping the abbot? You know what he's been doing to our families? Peter, Peter is threatening the entire abbey, not just the abbot. I suppose you do have some friendliness with them. 
Those monks never did any good by me or my family. By my measure, they've done a lot of harm. I understand your anger toward the abbot, but the monks don't deserve to die. And what do we deserve, Andreas? To starve? When's the last time you went hungry, Andreas? In the last month, I count more lean days than full. If it weren't for Ulrich's charity, we wouldn't have any bread at all this week. Sorry, Johan, but I have to do this. All right. You know what? If you're dead set on this, I think I can point you towards someone. What? Really? Yes, really. It's my nephew, Martin. Martin? Really? Why? Because I don't think he's who he says he is. I don't think he's Martin at all! Oh my god! I was saying this! I'm like, he's such a- he's so changed. Such a changed man. That it's just like... I was like, who- you who has stolen Martin and replaced him? Why do you think that? We all see what we want to see here, Andreas. The things we don't want to see, we ignore it for as long as we can, for everyone's sake. I don't say anything about Eva's pretty blonde hair. Jorg doesn't say anything about my daughter's friendship with Brigitte. Ah, oh, hmm. Brigitte and Kat don't say anything about Martin. Strong Martin. Hard-working Martin. Faithful Martin. Do you have any evidence? No, just suspicion and reason to not trust the man. When the abbot decided to give us old Ranig Kemper's land, there was a foe. There was a fee that we had to pay. We needed to expand. My brother and I couldn't say no. So the land went to both of us, and after Francis' death, a portion went to Martin. That doesn't sound like the worst thing. No, it wouldn't be if Martin hadn't brought up the idea of selling off the lease. That or parceling it out to other families. It gets complicated, but he'd be putting my land on the other side of someone else's. This whole arrangement works because we hold the land together. You know what the mob will do if they find out Martin's an imposter? Maybe. Anyway, if he is an imposter, he's sleeping with another man's wife, working on stolen land. Oh, don't say that. Alright, I'll consider it. Good. Sleeping with another man's wife, eh? Interesting. Johan Bauer told me he doesn't think the man calling himself Martin is actually his nephew. He didn't offer any specific evidence, but he seems confident in his assertion. Dude, I was talking about this stuff. Hmm, interesting. No evidence, though. So it's a hell of a thing to... It's a hell of a thing to, to just run with. Just because this man's suspicious. Because at the same time, he also just has a personal stake in that. Of not having land sold. So I don't know. We're going to go... Oh, I've gone the wrong way. Oh, no, I haven't. Uh, we're going to the bakery because we're going to see if Anna has the note yet. She hasn't returned it. Master Andreas, can you help me with something? I can't show mum and dad because it's a secret. Yeah, don't worry. We are aware. I can keep a secret. It's a note, but I can't read it myself. I thought the purple ink was pretty. Okay, I'm glad I thought to go to, to Anna. He knows... He knows who you are now. He won't stop. The rat house after St. John's fire. Holy shit. So the thread puller gave this note to Martin. The thread puller gave this note to Martin to inspire a motive to murder. He will be at the rat house after St. John's fire. And he knows who you are now. And he won't stop. That is a spicy note with what we've just learned. What do you think it means, Master Andreas? The note must be a warning. Whoever killed Otto had a secret they didn't want discovered. The thing is, this note was given to Martin, but if that note was also given to 
guy, it would have the same implication. You know what I mean? Where did you find this, Anna? I found it at the Bowers house. It was just sitting out and I grabbed it. You can keep the paper, Master Andreas. Just don't tell anyone where you got it, promise? It's our secret. Good, I'll see you later, Master Andreas. Goodbye, Anna. Be good. During St. John's Eve, Anna stole a note that was seemingly left for Martin Bauer. It suggested Otto knew who Martin was and stated the place and time where Otto was later murdered. Ah, <sighs> God. And then we have some more evidence that stacks up against someone else entirely. Two people with a motive to kill Otto. Oh boy. How do we pass the time today? I feel like the only way to like pass the time in any of these is uh, going to the inn with a round of drinks for everybody. Old suspicious Martin, eh? Oh, that makes this so fucking tough. Oh yeah, we can either go hunting with Lenhart or loosening some lips at the at the Golden Hand. I feel like this is the better choice because we already know what's going on with Lenhart in, in a way. So I think that we should do this. Buy a round for everybody. Master Mela, is there anything I can do for you? Nico, have you heard anyone in here talking about Otto's murder? I'm not just talking about it, but you know. Yeah, you know. Mm, exactly. Okay, we've already gone through this dialogue twice now. So let's do the let's do the beers. Buy a round for everyone. Why not? It's worth trying. Have a seat then. Folk filter in as they finish their work for the day. All right. Whoa. Wow, they really do filter in. I didn't expect so many people. Samuel's here. A lot of people that I don't even recognize right here. Even Thomas is in here, which is actually quite surprising. Look at all these people. Hey, Andreas here says he's buying drinks for everyone. Oh, Martin is here too. Before you get too excited, I'd like to say a few words about the man Tassing just lost, Otto Zimmerman. I know it's hard to think about anything but the Duke's soldiers right now, but just listen for a moment. I'm standing on the table to announce this one. A toast. <laughs> Otto was a good man. He stuck up for the people in this town. And he was a loving husband to Eva and a good father to Otz. His reward in heaven will be equal to his good deeds on earth. Saint Peter, Christian evangelist and the first bishop of Rome, patron saint of fishermen. To Otto! Seeing who doesn't cheer, I think everyone cheered. Everyone, it's it's a feast day, so please don't indulge too heavily on Otto's account. This man is, has been unhappy faced this whole time too. We aren't Lutherans. The most prominent of the Protestant branches, Lutherans were banned from propagating their ideas in the Holy Roman Empire and suffered severe persecution for their beliefs. Haha, <laughs> too late. Interesting. With him being as drunk as he is, I am very keen to talk to him. Very keen to talk to him indeed. The Golden Hands customers are enjoying themselves. I should see if I can glean anything about Otto's murder from them while everyone's in a boisterous mood. This probably works out for the best here. I cannot talk to Martin. I am actually quite annoyed now. Wow! Who are these people? They are so interesting looking. All right, we've got Samuel, which I've been waiting to talk to this whole time. Barbara. Okay, so Samuel and Barbara and Werner. As much as he's a dick, he's also the, like not suspicious. Can't believe we can't speak to Martin. All right, Samuel first. Finally. 
Andreas Baylor, right? You're staying here at the Golden Hand, aren't you? <laughs> I don't think we've met. How do you know my name? We've met day in, day out. Never had a conversation. Excuse me. I don't think we've met. How do you know my name? Of course they do. We're in, we're in an inn. Yes and yes. I am as well. Named Samuel Grau. I'm recruiting men to become Lanchnecks. Well, when some actual men show up. Excuse me, I don't think we've met. How do you know my name? People say you got the Abbey's prior killed a few years back. That may be logically true, but it's not a fair description of what occurred. It didn't say it was fair, it's what people say. I was just telling young Hans and Fabian about the life of a Lanchnecht. Which is mercenaries found throughout the Holy Roman Empire in service of the Imperial Army. They are known for their colourful and flamboyant fashion, their ferocity, and their short life bands. What's the pay like? Is it dangerous? Four gold in a month, and yes, it's dangerous. Mind you that you do have to pay for your own equipment. How much? Eh, uh, 13 to 15 golden. Damn, that's more than 10. Yes, it is. It's three to five more than 10. Do you have 10 golden? Oh, no, I don't have any golden. You see what I'm dealing with here, Mela? You, boy. Me. Yes, you look like you're from a family that's, uh, that isn't completely impoverished. Want to join up? Boy is my apprentice. Oh, my apologies. No offense intended. I understand your instincts, though. Caspar is a fine lad. I'll never let you down, Master Andreas. Well then, would you be interested in playing a card game to pass the time? We're playing Lans Lansquinet. Interesting. I think I played that with some soldiers in tours. Well, you haven't played my version, but I can explain the rules as we go. Want to play? Why not? We're playing a card game. The rules are simple enough. Pay attention, boys. If you forget everything else, remember that you want to see a card that matches what's in front of you get dealt into the center. That means you win. Okay. If you forget everything else, here's the one rule. Don't re forget the one rule. Remember that you want to see a card that matches what's in front of you get dealt into the center. Okay. If you see matching cards... If you see matching cards going into the discard pile, your chances of winning are going down because there are only four of a kind in a deck. Now, at the start of each hand, everyone has to hand... Everyone has to ante in money to play with four players. We each ante a penny. After the ante, the dealer shuffles, then deals one card to every player, okay, at the table, starting with himself. Okay, everyone's got a card. Ecorn. I really like the artwork on these cards, it's beautiful. All cards are dealt face up in this game, so we all know what we're dealing with. The volume, the value of the card is only important if we run through the whole deck, but it may influence your strategy. In this game, the queen is the high card, followed by the king, then the farmer. Each turn, you can raise by the ante, stay, or fold from the game. Seems simple, 40 cards in a deck, three besides my own will result in a victory. I think if I can, I can figure the odds, I'll win. We will, oh, I have logic here. I have a logical odds chance here. That's really cool. Uh, let's stay. Oh, hang on, no, but this is 24% that I'll win, so it's like I should fold. I'm a stay. However, if any player raises, every other player must meet the raise. Still 24.7% of winning, so we have to meet the raise. You bet. When all players are finished, we deal three cards into the discard pile. Then we bet again. Can I view the pile? I just went up to 29.4% chance of winning. So one of his got kicked out. 
two of his number two num two number ones, right? So two of his got kicked out. I will bet. Then one goes in the middle. If it matches any player's card, that player wins. If it doesn't match, we go through another round until someone wins or we run out of cards. Twenty nine point five percent still the same because no one's cards got played in there. Interesting. All of our cards are quite important. These ones memorable. This one is not. <laughs> I'm staying in the game. Oh. Huh. Ah. Oh, this was a tutorial. Oh, because number one went in there and he has number one. So even though he had two go in and you'd think it's very unlikely for him to win because he only had one other card that could be pulled, it was played. And he still won if we were playing a real hand. If we run out of cards, the highest card wins. If multiple players have high cards, the highest suit wins. Leaves high, followed by hearts, bells, and then acorns at the bottom. So leaves, hearts, bells, and acorns. Okay, all right, let's play a real game now. All right, let's logically think this through. Well, my percentage chance was right, I didn't win. Four of hearts. 34.7% chance of winning. Okay, so two leaves, an acorn, and a heart. He is the highest sweet, which means if we run out of cards, he will win. Actually, no, they both do. Of hearts and of acorns, so he would win. He would be second. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, so... He just lost one. And these both of these two lost one. He folded too. Okay. I will I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in. I don't need to bet. I'm not in this for the money, I'll just stay. Now I have to bet because he's chosen to bet. Oh my chance went down. Oh, I have lost a four, haven't I? So I've lost some percentage because one of mine went into pile. I will stay. Now I have to bet because they have betted. I'm not going to bet unnecessarily. I won! Now that one hand has been dealt, the dealer hands the deck to the player on his left. He is now the dealer for the next hand. I like that... This game has a fun mini, like, mini game to it as well. That's fun. I do, I do like, I do quite like that. I'm wondering if we'll get some information in this game, but it seems like it's more of a focusing on the actual game for now. Stay. I won, so I got money. Oh, can we have some beer, Samuel? Why not? Master Mailer is paying. Here you are, boys. Enjoy. Thanks. I like Mistress Hannah. Dad says she brings food to the men working on the rat house. My dad says she's always over there. Seems weird. Maybe it's just Christian charity. Come on, boys. Back to the game. Okay, so we're probably going to get some information here. Oh, I've lost a bell. I have lost a bell. I'm not in the mood to really, like, I don't have to bet. So I'll just keep staying, but I'll bet when they bet. Because I have to. Eighteen percent chance. I mean, I'll probably lose this one, I reckon. So the bet is now fifteen. Oh, you know what? Oh, so it just needs to be a three, isn't that right? I'm a I'm a fold this one. Oh, bells, bells, bells! So close to mine. Hans wins because he got a five. 
My turn. Let's continue. Seven of hearts, seven of leaves, one of bells, six of acorns. Bet. Have you travelled far, Samuel? I suppose, all over the Empire and down south, uh, Navarra, Milan, Pavia. Must be really far away. I never heard of any of those places. Pavia? I heard about that battle, I think. You fought the French. Mmm, French and Italian. Swiss too. Beat them all. I saw the King of France humiliated as my brothers took him prisoner and led him from the field. If I die in my sleep tonight, I can say that I basked in glory for one day of this miserable life. Oh, two sixes have been lost. Three sixes have been lost. You're automatically out of here, baby. That's, that is the, that's terrible luck. Just having all three of your cards go out. Thirty-seven point four percent chance, eh? I'm a still stay. Oh, three and four of hearts, straight up. Oh, I just realized something. That we both have seven. But I have hearts. Oh shit. No, I just realized something. Wait a wait a sec. Isn't it leaves are above hearts? Leaves are at the top. So why is this so still so high? I don't I he would win, right? Wouldn't he not would he not? Maybe I'm missing a step. Oh my god, what is happening here? Three, four, five of hearts? What is happening here with my shuffling skills? 33.9%. Why do I feel like this is still gonna be a loss? I don't know. So I went three, four, five, six, but instead of six of hearts, went up to six of bells, because six of hearts has already been discarded. Two of hearts. Fifty point eight percent chance. Everyone's staying instead of betting. Ooh. Just gone down to 40%. Damn, that was so close to him. Ooh, and it just went down to zero because seven and seven have just been discarded. So seven and seven have just been discarded, and he has the only other one. So if these got added to the pile, we would have won. We've run out of cards in the deck, so the high card wins. So what's his face wins? Hans wins. Hans ending up with the most money right now, which is quite funny. <laughs> Let's play another one. That way we've played one of each person dealing the cards. The Seven of Hearts again. Wow, that was a quick game. That was a quick game. Interesting that we can just continue. I'm going to do one more. Seven of hearts again. What is going on here? Oh, two sixes. You've already folded. Okay.
Ooh. I win. Nice. Um, I'm gonna leave on the. I'm gonna leave on that high point. I'm gonna leave on that one. Thanks for the game, but I'm done for now. Of course. Until later, Andreas. Nice. Visiting the rat house. Ah, oh, Fabian mentioned that Hannah's frequent visits to the rat house seemed odd. She may have been inspecting the site for a convenient way to kill Otto. But we know about that, don't we? Already. So that's cool. So you end up just doing something and then you get a, um, get some information. Barbara. Are you the man to thank for the drinks? Oh, it was nothing. Thanks. Yes, thanks. It was a long road here from Mildorf. Mildorf. We came to visit the Shrine of St. Moritz, but the sisters said it's closed because of some trouble. Uh, that's one way to put it. Well, our priest told me to take a pilgrimage here after God saved my little goat's life. I'm very happy for your goat. She means the boy, Philip, over there. God damn it, Philip, get off that table! Don't curse, father. Oh, all right, all right. Say nothing. Off he goes to go chat with Martin. Anyway, the boy climbed up in a tree, jumped off and landed his hand on a board with a nail through it. Jesus. Why, he's just standing on the table with these fellas. He's just take it. Is he just going to try and take a drink? This is hilarious. What is happening here? His arm swelled like a bloated pig in the sun. Can't, he's right behind me. He's, he's gotten up here. He's climbed up on the table and he's just sat here. Must, I, must you describe it that way? Well, it did. He had such an awful fever like he was boiling in his own skin. I prayed to God to save my little goat and the next day a miracle. It's true. That very next day. The fever could have broken naturally. Oh sh why didn't I why did I why did I do that? Why wouldn't I just be nice? <sighs> what is there in nature that is not according to God's will? Nothing, of course. Exactly, all by his design. I asked our priest in Muldorf how to thank God. Since the little goat's arm had swollen so badly, he said we should make a pilgrimage to see the hand of Saint Moritz. Philip! Off! So you can imagine how disappointed we are that the shrine is closed. Shouldn't have said that. That was so silly. Of course. Hopefully you won't have to wait long. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. Philip! Just dragging him back in here. I'm sorry. The boy won't listen. It's no trouble. Do I know you? It's possible. I travelled around a bit when I was younger. Ah, that must be it. Thank you for returning the boy. Interesting. Do I know you? Were you here on St. John's Eve? No, we arrived yesterday morning. Why? I'm trying to figure out if someone in town was involved in my friend's death. No, I don't think we can help with that. Alright, thanks anyway. Till next time. Till then. Okay. A glimmer of recognition. There you go. Joshua, one of the peasants staying at the Golden Hand, seemed to recognize Martin from one of the other towns they'd passed through. So it adds to that list. Can't speak to them. Can't speak to Martin. Hmm. Let us speak to Werner. Let us speak to Werner upstairs in that case. Speaking Italian. Not even gonna try. Margarete. Dominic de Coco. Grazie. Ah, Master Mela, thank you for the drink. Care to join us? The other doctors and I are having quite the chat. I should be able to understand them, right? Because I have my t Italian background. 
Uh, oh, if you don't mind, I'd like to listen in. Certainly, I'll introduce you. Dominic de Coco. Um, Mark Antonio Orsi, Vincenzo Ambrosi, and Angelo Garciani are esteemed doctors from Bologna, traveling to Flanders. Bologna. And then I have an Italian background. I am pleased to meet you. I am something something. I am pleased to make your acquaintance. It is a pleasure to meet you. Ah, Ches Olivio, Possemio Palè, Tutti Italiano. Ah, what a relief. We can all speak in Italian. This is great that I have an Italian background. I like that. So I don't have to read this. What were we discussing? Pliny the Elder's Natural History. A first century Roman historian, statesman, and philosopher known for his work Natural History, which may consider, many consider, the first encyclopedia. Ah. It's shit. <laughs> That's unnecessarily reductive. Andreas, are you familiar with Pliny the Elder's Natural History? Aha, that would be funny. Why would an artist know natural history? I've read parts of it out of curiosity. It's interesting to me. And I went fairly in depth with it during my medical training in university. I really like these backgrounds we've chosen. I must say that I'm shocked to hear that an artist went to medical school. Well, obviously he didn't graduate or he would be a doctor, not an artist. Werner, these are intelligent men. I'm sure they've inferred that on their own. This will be remembered. Haha, <laughs> indeed. Well, where were we? Natural history is shit. Oh, Nick. So, Niccolo Leoniceno, 15th century Italian physician and humanist, dedicated himself to correcting mistranslations of Pliny's natural history and verifying existing medical texts. So he said um, 30 years ago, this is nothing new. Why does it still need to be debated? We are all still using the text in our practice, so the debate is ended, is it not? Unless Leo Ceno has published a work to replace Pliny. Heh. <laughs> of course he has not, but the question remains if the mistakes in natural history are simply transcription errors or something worse. Even Coluccio, Pliny's greatest defender, admits there are translation errors. Everyone accepts this. True, true, yes, yes, but Leonicheno's criticism is deeper than that. He also calls into question the Arab sources we rely on to identify our medicines. Between transcription errors and bad sources, why does anyone still revere it as though it were the word of God? Dare we ask your opinion on the matter, Andreas? In a th over a thousand years, it's time for educated men to make a new reference. It's true, though, when you look back on this from a modern perspective. But a foundational text without a suitable replacement. But it, de it depends on that foundational, what that foundational text's foundation is. What if the foundation is incorrect? It's time for educated men to make a new reference. Great. We'll get started right away. Well, he's right. We can either complain about it or do something about it. Pliny's not going to come back to do it for us. Didn't someone just die here on St. John's Eve? Angelo, that's who we toasted to. Andreas bought the drinks. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, Andreas. My German is so poor, I didn't understand. This is so good because they, like, you have to remember that it's all written in English for us, but they're all speaking German. Oh, Bavarian? Don't trouble yourself over it. Did you know the man well? 
Yes, I considered him a friend. Ah, then I pray that he is near to God. I was there when it happened, or right after it happened, at least. That's right, Dr. Stolls and his neighbor were the first people on the scene. Hmm. What, what was that? Was that what all the commotion was about? It woke us up, but we didn't know what was happening. Interesting. Do you see anything unusual around that time? We called out to the innkeeper. He and his boy came out and looked confused. Anything else? Wait. Where was Hannah? Why would only the innkeeper and the boy come out? We know where Hannah was. If she's unaccounted for, that gives her an opportunity to have been involved in the murder. Anything else? I heard there was an accident by the town hall. It was no accident. Someone intentionally loosed some lumber that dropped on the poor man's head. As he arrived on the scene, Dr. Stoltz saw a suspicious figure lurking in the darkness. What? It was murder! Yes, and the peasants are blaming the abbot. Is it true? The abbot, a murderer? What a scandal. Do you remember anything else about that night? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Ah, well, the entire evening is still shrouded in mystery. Angry face. Look at this, look at this face that he's giving to them. It's nice meeting you, gentlemen, but I must attend to other business. Safe journeys. Many thanks. God be with you, Andreas. Oh, Andreas? Oh, persuade Werner to do what? What? Uh, a nice halfway point there. Made Werner look dumb in front of the doctors. Gave an annoying opinion on natural history. Mentioned Werner's role in finding Otto's body. Twice. What? Never mind. Oh. I made him look dumb. All right. Until later. I impressed his friends, but not him. Oh, people. Oh. 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 People moving around. I thought this man was actually quite uh, calm and relaxed. He is very red in the face, very drunk, though. God damn it! What's wrong with you? Blind? Dumb? El Marti, it's not an incident. Calm down, it was an accident. Logiro. I swear. What the hell are you saying? Speak German! Come on! He's doing the hand. What do you want me to say? It's just beer. Oh, you want to fight? You came to the right place, fancy man, because he's got his hands out. Oh, sucked him right in the face. We've got a bar fight on our hands, baby. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Martin just laying into this random dude. I don't think this is how you wanted it to go, is it, Master Andreas? Start punching. I reckon I'll end up with a punch in the face in a second. This is. <laughs> Should get involved, Caspar. Just stay out of their way. Samuel Grow! Yes? I'll give you two Groshen to end this fight now! I'd love to help, but I normally get paid double rate. Fine, four Groshen. Stop fighting, now. Oh. <laughs> Woo. Martin. <laughs> Everyone out. Everyone out. Damn. Troops have arrived at Vespers, eating time. Everyone will be waiting to hear my evidence now. That was one hell of a way to have it be delivered, wasn't it? I'd best head into town and be prepared to name a suspect. I don't think we have... I genuinely don't think we have enough for Martin. And Martin's just... 
it might be completely unrelated, but it's it is still quite suspicious. But brother guy, I don't know. Ugh, it's it's a tough one. I had an interesting few hours at the Golden Hand, all told. I met some intriguing friends of Werner's, played a game of uh, Lansquinet with Samuel Grau, a Landschnecht visiting Tassing to recruit for his regiment, and spoke to a family of pilgrims from Muldoff in town to visit the shrine of St. Moritz. Okay. Hmm. Oh, hello again. Seems like we all came out of that brawl all right. It would seem so, yes. Tavern fights are dangerous. You never know who you run into, especially in a place with a lot of strangers. I saw a fight back in Muldorf, which I hadn't watched a man die right in front of me. In a tavern fight? Men can die anywhere, I suppose. You just don't expect to see it when you're having a beer. Thing is... Ah, I shouldn't. Never mind. Is it the guy that you recognize? What is it? It's just with the talk of a murder in the town, made me think of something. Oh. Oh, the one time that I was literally like, oh, I shouldn't have fucking said that. Surely with three plus points, like, does it have to go all the way to the top? You know, surely this means that we have more of a chance for it to be a, 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 a success, right? Some, something nice about Otto showed sympathy and asked for help. I hate that you need to get it, like, Oh, I hate that you need to get it all the way to the top. No, I'm sorry. It's not my business. I don't want to, to implicate an innocent man. I reckon what he was probably going to talk about would be that that man that he recognizes, that's Martin, could have potentially been the man to kill Martin and replaced him, if that's going to be where that train of thought goes. Well, I'll let you get on with your day. Till later. Till then. That just annoys me, that does. That frustrates me to no end. Land skirts are surrounding the town. I suggest leaving while you have the chance. I'm trying to stop this before it gets out of hand. Things seem quite out of hand already, Master Mailer. Unless someone gets their, these peasants to calm down, the Duke's soldiers will spill blood. Master Andreas? We'll be all right, Caspar. I'll, I'll figure something out. If you say so. May God prepare you both for what is to come. All right. Let's just check the map. Hmm. I wonder if we can see uh, Martin's freshly punched face. God bless you, Andreas. The soldiers have arrived. The dreaded hour is here. Martin's face is looking fine. Huh, Andreas. How are you feeling after that brawl? Looks like you escaped the worst of it. Of a cautious nature, I suppose. Well. You didn't miss out on much, so I guess I'm the fool in all this. Anything I can do for you? No, nothing. Yeah, it's it's suspicious and there's points happening there, but it just unfortunately isn't enough. I think we have to go with Brother Guy and all of the information that we found because that affects so many people. Oh, damn, we don't have much time, so let's get this over with. I know some of you are frightened. Some of you want to give up, but we have to see this through. Maybe we can't get what we've been fighting for, but we can get justice for Otto. That's right, for Otto, justice! Dad, what about the Duke's soldiers? They've been getting closer all day. I know, that's why we have to do this now, before it's too late. All we need now is for Andreas to tell us who did it. No more stalling, Andreas. We need to know who killed Otto. We need to know now. Can Andreas even tell us the truth?
Of course I can. Finding the culprit is all I've been doing since you chased the monks into the library. Peace, peace. If Andreas names the guilty party, they should face the law, not a mob. I'm not debating this, Ulrich. We're out of time. Acting now is the only way to get justice. We can't let anything stop us. A name, Andreas. Just give us a name. We'll do the rest. She made it, everyone. She made it. Ah, the child has been born at the same time that the soldiers have arrived. Rachel gave birth to a baby girl. Oh, that, that do be a bloody baby. I have scented the baby with my own uh, appearance here. <laughs> quiet, quiet. Everyone needs to stay back and give Rachel space. Yes, Agnes, of course. All is well. Praise God. Safe and sound, and a baby girl, Baruch Hashem. With everything going on, with everything that could have happened. God be praised. Thank God. Such a blessing. Thanks be to God indeed. <laughs> Child and baby. Klaus. Peter, I'm sorry. I can't keep supporting you anymore. I understand your cause, but I need to protect my daughter and keep my friends safe. I've already lost Marie and Bert. Can't bear to lose anyone else. If bowing to the Duke's wishes will protect us, I'll do it gladly. I believe in the cause, Peter, but not at the cost of any more violence. You're making the right decision, Klaus. Lives are at stake now. Please excuse me, everyone. I need a moment to myself. Maybe he's right. This is too much. Right, what about our safety? New violence isn't the answer. The matter isn't so straightforward. How can you all so easily give up? That soldier said the Duke would consider concessions for the town if we release the abbot. Surely that will be enough. It may be enough to approach the Duke's soldiers, especially if you let the abbot go. Force will not solve anything. Letting the abbot go and getting concessions is the best solution for everyone, Peter. Letting the abbot go would be justice, wouldn't it, if he's not the one who killed Otto? You townsfolk don't understand. Letting the abbot go won't fix anything. If we can't get the concessions we need, all peasants will starve and die in the end, and then where will Tassing be? Besides, Otto's death needs to be vindicated. Don't walk away from this now, Ulrich. I have not swayed from the cause, Peter, rest assured. But Ulrich, this isn't your fight. Gret, it is moral and Christian to stand with the peasants. I cannot do otherwise. Damn you all, such behavior is reckless and cruel, especially right now. Get out, all of you, let Rachel rest. Yes, Agnes, we'll go now. Andreas, we're not done. We must still find justice for Otto before the Duke's soldiers arrive. Yes. Let's continue this outside. To comply. Chapter 6, this major. Chapter 6. No more stalling. No more interruptions. Tell us what you know, Andreas. Give us a name. Give us a name or the monks shall burn along with their precious books. Mobbing the culprit won't give you any concessions. Let's just give the murderer to the Duke's men instead. Remember your promise. You'll let them go. You won't hurt them. This is true. Because you'll mob this guy, let the abbot go, and then... I don't know. Mobbing the culprit won't give you any concessions. Let's just give the murderer to the Duke's men instead. The Duke's men have forced us to act. We can worry about the abbot and the soldiers after we've dealt with the killer. Tell us. I have one more condition. God damn it, Mailer! We don't have time for this! Let Kaspar leave. He doesn't have to be wrapped up in this mess. What? Leave? Yes, fine. The boy can leave. It's not his fight. Oh.
this whole time, I thought that I've just been protecting him. And that protection has led me to what? I've been so nice to him this whole time, and, you know, encouraged him to learn from our mistakes. Showed concern for him on St. John's Eve, cared for him after we fell into the cistern, reassured him when the mob came. All of these, and I was telling you all of these moments last episode or so, when I was like, we have had so many this will be remembered moments with Caspar that I just know that it's going to be tied to something like important. And then it's like, please, Caspar, I couldn't live with myself if something happened to you. Convince Caspar to leave Tassing. And that is a total and utter failure. No, no, Master Andreas, I won't leave you. I know you don't want to, but you have to. Find your way back to Salzburg, back to your family. Please. He's not going to leave. Master Andreas, you'll teach me again when this is all over, right? Of course, Caspar. I'll be right behind you. All right. I'll see you soon, Master. He's definitely not going to, like... He's definitely not going to go. Who killed Otto? Oh, shit. Okay. Wow. Pick a suspect to rally the mob against. Press and hold to confirm your choice. Martin, Hannah, and Guy. So we have multiple pages. Johann Bauer told me he doesn't think the man calling himself Martin is actually his nephew. He didn't offer any specific evidence, but he seemed confident in his assertion. During St. John's Eve, Anna stole a note that was seemingly left for Martin, suggested Otto knew who Martin was, and stated the place and time where Otto was later murdered. Joshua, one of the peasants staying at the Golden Hand, seemed to recognize Martin from one of the other towns they'd passed through. This is the most crucial bit, giving a time and place for where Otto would be. Caspar and I overheard Hannah Berggren speaking with Lenhart Mueller. She said she was glad someone killed Otto because an uprising would have threatened pilgrim visits to the Shrine of St. Moritz, which would have been disastrous for the Golden Hand. Also, it's clear she's having an affair with the Miller. Killian Berger gave me a note he found on the floor while cleaning, clearly from the thread puller. It suggested that Otto was going to destroy the Abbey and the Hand of St. Moritz, trying to push her to murder too. And Fabian mentioned that Hannah's frequent visits to the Rat House seemed odd. She may have been inspecting the site for a convenient way to kill Otto. Guy, seven <clears throat> accounts. Sister Amelie overheard Guy's confession to Father Thomas. Otto saw him writing in the Abbey's financial ledger and confronted him about it, determined to prove the Abbey was hoarding money. Guy confessed to Father Thomas that he was embezzling money from the Abbey. Sister Amelie told us because she recognized that Guy was abusing the seal of confession to ensure Thomas would not tell the abbot. Now I need to see if I can find any more evidence. Guy's misdeeds, ideally the ledger itself. Found the Abbey's financial ledger in the sacristy. Brother Guy was balancing the books using a double bookkeeping method. He keeps meticulous records, maybe too meticulous. Oh, so this is just recounting all of our things, obviously. We found the book. It's a manual on enacting necromancy rituals. Fresh lemons for um, invisible ink. Lemon juice to write an invisible message on the sheet of parchment. He was able to make the message appear. Brief ledger of Brother Guy making to a Fugger bank account. And a jar in the herb hut containing rings and other jewels. Sister Margaret identified Brother Guy as the monk who hid them there. Going with Brother Guy. It was Brother Guy. Doing the abbot's bidding. Maybe we'll be burning down the abbey after all. No, Guy acted alone. He was stealing money from the abbey. Otto tried to see Guy's ledger at the scriptorium. When Guy refused, Otto said he'd see it one way or another. So he panicked. One way or another, he'd be caught, either by Otto or the abbot. I found a book in the abattoir and confirmed it was Brother Guy who brought it there. A slaughterhouse. Only a few days ago, Guy hid some of his stolen money in one of the sister's herb jars. One of the sisters identified him, and I saw the stolen money with my own eyes. It was a small fortune. It sounds like the brothers learned their greed from the abbot. I found a book in the abattoir and confirmed it was Brother Guy who brought it there. The book was a manual of magic. Guy had marked a section he could use to cast a spell on Otto. Which is true. That was also there with Otto's name in it. Magic! God protect us! We won't touch the others, Andreas, but if Brother Guy killed Otto, he needs to face justice. All right, Peter, we've heard Andreas out, but the accused should be allowed to defend themselves. I've heard enough. We're getting Guy. 
search the abbey for Brother Guy. Was he with the other monks? What if they're protecting him? Quickly, get to the scriptorium. I saw a guy running out of the church just now. He was headed towards Lenhart's mill. Let's go, get after him. Oh, brother guy has tried to make an escape. Oh shit, with Lenhart up there. Stay back, brutes. This won't end well for any of you. Brother guy has my protection and I won't hesitate to shoot you like the animals you are. So stay away from my fucking mill. And you, Andreas, I thought you'd made something of yourself. It seems you're really as pathetic as the rest of this lot. Let justice prevail, Lenhart. Giving us the accused is the right thing to do. Damn it, Andreas, you had to go and side with the rabble. Letting them run amok in this town is irresponsible, but I guess that doesn't bother you, does it? Elsie, take the boy and go. You don't need to be involved in this. No, Elsie, get back in the mill. Don't you dare disobey me, Paul. You hear me? Get your mother back inside. I'm not staying here any longer. I'm taking mum and we're leaving, somewhere far away from you. You'll regret this, boy. I won't be responsible for how your life turns out if you leave. Lenhart, let them go. They've lived under your rule long enough. I should have expected this from you, Paul. You've always been a sad excuse for a son. And Elsie, if you do this, you won't find anyone else to love you. You'll be a feckless old crone like that Ortilia, Elsie. It's over, Lenhart. They're gone. Brother Guy's like literally right here. Just grab him out. You're not so high and mighty now, are you? You're gonna lose everything, just like us. Give up, Mueller. There's more of us than you in that mill. And you can't shoot us all. Give us that dirty monk, you bastard. I didn't do anything. You have to believe me. I had nothing against Otto. Nothing against the peasants. I'm on your side. You're a liar, thief, and a murderer. And now you'll pay for it. You're all mad. This isn't how the law works, and you know it. Your blabbering will change nothing. You've never given a damn about law, or justice, or proprietary, or fucking decency a day in your life, Lenhart. Ha! You've let me have my way for years, Peter, and done shit all about it. You've never stood up for anything. You won't get any further today, coward. Peter, Lenhart, please let us search for peace tonight. Such language is not Christian. Coward, am I? Come down here and face me like a man, you piece of shit. Please, everyone, calm down. We can still talk this out. Violence is not the answer, Peter. You can't blame the man, Auric. Force is all Peter and his family knows. It certainly worked with Christine. How dare you even speak her name, much less suggest... Oh, shit, Ulrich. Lenhart, you killed him. Murder! You monster! Burn him! Make him pay! Justice! You've been a menace on this town long enough, Lenhart, but murder! You've brought this on yourself. Let both of the murderers die together. And in he goes, and then they're gonna just burn the mill down. Thomas runs in. Andreas, troops are advancing on the town. We need to go now. We must let the abbot out so we can talk to the Duke's soldiers. You're right. Let's go. Father Abbot, you can come out. The peasants won't hurt you now. Really? Why? Andreas found the killer and justice has been dispensed. Peter has to keep his word. Are you sure? Please, Father Abbot, the Duke's soldiers have surrounded the town. We have to show them you're in no danger that the peasants aren't holding you captive. We don't want any more bloodshed, Father. Oh, thank God. Is it over? Finally. Finally. What's happened at the mill? Is anyone hurt? We saw a fire. And where's Brother Guy? What's happened to him?
Peter, stop. You got your justice. You swore that you wouldn't harm the abbot or the brothers, remember? I did. No one else needs to die tonight. The abbot can talk to the Duke's Herald. You held Lenhart responsible for his actions. You can convince the Duke that what happened here tonight was justice. Otto is dead. Ulrich is dead. We can work through this, Peter. Hope is not lost. Everything can go back to the way it was before. Right, the way it was before. Like nothing ever happened. Peter. He's gonna burn the library. What is it? What did you do? Dad? God save us, he's lit the manuscripts! Nothing's ever going to change. The books! Dad, what did you do? We need to get to the water! We need to get to the water in the sister's well, quickly, before it spreads! Peter, the soldiers are in the abbey, they're coming this way! We need to save as many of the books as we can! No, we need to get out of here! God save us! Ah, out, get out, Dad! We have to go! Everybody run! Oh, goodness, happen? Oh, no, Andreas, let's go! <laughs> Shit, dude. I've got some books. I'm sorry, I can't. Oh, shit. Andreas! Dude, holy shit. Till died. Oh, it's me in the library at the top. No. But if we went, if what? We went in there to try and save the books and we just perished. Andreas! Fuck, this, this is how it ends. So many murders taking place. The mill burning, the abbey burning. To all interested parties regarding investments made to Andreas Mailer, artist of Nuremberg, for the creation of a mural in the Church of Our Lady. The Chamber Court upholds the rulings of the Nuremberg City Court and Council in 1526 and 1527, respectively. All claimants signed contracts containing clauses under which their investments could be returned. As Andreas Mailer's death indisputably resulted from a greater power, a contractually exempted circumstance, his estate cannot be held liable. In the interest of feminine liberty, his widow, Sabine, retains all contested investments. The 15th day of February, Anno Domini, 1534. Damn. Andreas gave his life. It's not over. It's not over. Holy shit. It's not over. That was not the end. I was like, that's going to be the end of Andreas's story. This is the... I, mean, I guess we, this, is, this must be like an epilogue. 
maybe, of like what's what's happened so many years after the event. Magdalene's all grown up. Look at her. Feels like it's getting cold early this year, doesn't it? At my age, it feels like the cold comes earlier every year. But we need this chill for the leaves to fall and the gals with them. What, you don't want to climb this saint's tree and pull them off? Ha! Even in my youth, that would have required divine intervention. No, thank you. I'll stay here on the ground and wait patiently for the Lord to deliver. Don't you have ink back at your father's shop, though? For the press, he has it delivered. This is just for my own drawings. So, I guess this is showing and communicating to us that... Um, we are allowed to forage from the forest. The townsfolk can. It's not forbidden just for the abbey now. They're both able to do this together. Besides, sometimes it feels nice to do things the old way. An old way it is, I would know. Little Ots, it's been so many years now. What the hell? It's been way more than seven. Hey, Mags. Sister Gertrude. God bless you, Master Zimmerman. Told you not to call me that. What? Mags? Why? People call me Ots. You don't see me complaining. It's not even a name. It's a valley. You like being called Ots. Right, so? Why are you being so stuck up? Master Zimmerman, would you call... Mary Magdalene, witness to our Lord's death and resurrection. Mags. I guess not. Then it seems only fitting you should call Mistress Druckerin by her full Christmas name. Christmas, Christian name, not Christmas name. All right. Sorry, sister. Sorry, Mags. Magdalene. Anyway, your dad wants to see you. What? Why? Isn't he at the rat house? He is. He wants you to grab his mural sketches and bring them. Ah, uh, fine. I suppose this is enough goals for now. I was just about finished, too. God bless you both. Don't be long, Magdalene. The council's waiting on this. The council. Not sure why this falls on me, but I suppose I better get going. Hmm, I think Dad left the rat house plans on his workshop bench at home, next to the printing press. Chapter 7. The mural, October 1543, playing as Magdalene? Game continues? I was like, that was going to be the end, right? Surely. Andreas has passed, trying to save the books from the Abbey burning. That event take place, it's been years now. What the fuck? <laughs> wow. Chapter 7. Ot said Dad was looking for me. I need to grab the mural plans from the workshop at the house and then head to the rat house. They should be sitting on his workbench near the printing press. Uh, most expected, most unexpected thing of all time. Oh, wow. Look at it. It's gone off the map now. All burned and the convent garden and the sisters remained. Fuck me. Ah. Huh. I don't know what to say. That is quite shocking, actually. We will be bringing this episode of Pentiment to a close. It's not the ending, but it is something new. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode uh, and are enjoying Pentiment so far, because this, this story is such a ride. Uh, very unexpected twists and turns as we find ourselves now in the shoes of Magdalene for more Pentiment. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.